In this video, we'll take a look at an alternative to cross-site publishing that works even in SharePoint Online. So if we think about cross-site publishing, this is sometimes referred to as search-driven publishing or even search-driven sites. It's made up of a number of different features that deliver that capability. So first of all, we have catalogs. And a catalog is any list or library that I want to be able to consume somewhere else. Could be another site collection, could even maybe be another farm. Then there's catalog connection. So if I'm a site and I want to pull in information from that catalog, I ultimately can go establish a connection to that catalog. And that will allow me to start pulling in the information and displaying it within my site. And then the primary way for displaying that information is through a brand new web part called the content by search web part. Now, this is very similar to a content by query. Instead of using Camel though, it's going to use the search engine to pull that information in for display. Now, the bad thing is that all these capabilities, as cool as they are, they don't currently exist in SharePoint Online. So if I'm a SharePoint Online customer as part of Office 365, I'm going to be looking for some alternatives to deliver that sort of capability. And that's what we're going to illustrate here in this, this video. So the first thing I want to do is show you a typical setup for cross-site publishing. One of the principles of cross-site publishing is the separation of data entry from content display. And that's what we're going to have set up in Office 365 as well. So if I go into the admin console, one of the things that you'll see here, and I'll zoom in and try to highlight this, is we actually have two site collections set up here. One is this Dallas MTC site, and right below that we have Dallas MTC auth. These are separate site collections that one is going to be used for the data entry. That's our authoring site. And then one's going to be the actual display site that most people are going to go and visit and see the information really displayed the way we want. So just like any other deployment with, with cross-site publishing, we've set it up the exact same way. So let me go ahead and zoom out here and let's take a look at these two sites in more detail. So here's our display site. This is where we're going to actually be displaying all our content. Um, and in this case, it's, it's really just a blank publishing site. I've applied a, a brand to this so we have a nice look and feel. But ultimately, we're going to go and add some content here eventually that hopefully is going to come from our authoring site. So here's our authoring site. You notice that I don't have a brand and there's no master page applied to this other than out of the box one. And that's because really the only person that's going to be visiting this site is the authors. They're going to be coming in and basically entering in all their information in just a normal SharePoint list. In fact, here is that SharePoint list. I have a news list and this is just a custom list. And it has, as you can see, there's already a, a number of different news entries in here. And if I wanted to create a new one, you can see that it's really just a, a, a regular entry form. Again, it's just pure data entry. I'm not worrying about kind of the layout and how things look because that's what we're going to manage over on the display site. So you can see I have a title, a body, a caption. Um, I have some images that I can put in here, some different taxonomy fields that I have filled out. But ultimately, all that's going to be just stuck into this SharePoint list. Now, we want to be able to consume that list across site collections. So I can't use traditional things like a content query web part. But I can do is some interesting things with the SharePoint API. So what we're going to do is go back to our display site here. And I'm going to start by adding a special web part to this page called a script editor web part. It's a brand new web part for 2013 that's going to allow us to add some script to our page, um, you know, any sort of client side script that might go and call an API and pull some information back and display it the way we want. So let me go ahead and add like a header area here. And under content rollup, you can see that I have a, or actually media and content, I can go to script editor, go ahead and add that to our page. And I can edit the snippet here and I can stick in that snippet of script. So what we want is a snippet of script that's going to go off and basically call into the SharePoint REST APIs to look at our catalog ultimately, that news catalog. Now it's not really been designated as a catalog, but we can go and query directly against that so that we can display our information in this other site collection. So I'm in Visual Studio here and here you can see where I'm making a call like that. So um, you can see right here I'm, I'm going and I'm saying I want to go and get the news list and I want to select um, some things based upon whether or not a feature flag is set. So what we want to do is we're going to display the same news twice on this page. We're going to show featured news 
in one way, and then we're going to show things that aren't featured news in another. So this first one is going to be a, a really nice carousel view for featured news. So let me scroll down here, and I have another block of script that we're going to paste into our page. Now, in this case, this is actually a fancy carousel, so there's going to be a, a lot of script, but don't let that intimidate you. It's not too bad. So let's just grab this block, and we're going to just copy and paste this into our SharePoint site. Go and say insert, and then we're going to add a little bit more to another script editor web part to the other web part zone here. So let's add another script editor there. And again, we'll edit the snippet. And in this case, we have a, a much simpler little script that's just going to maybe output a bunch of items as, as list items. So here's our second block of script. Not too bad at all. So again, I'll copy and paste this into our script editor. Say insert. You can see it's already displaying our information in the other script editor. So um, the last thing I want to do here is I, I do want to edit this web part. And we're going to change the title to it. So we're going to show the title. And we want the title to say news. Go ahead and say OK. Let's save our page. And let's see what we've done now. So now you can see that our page is loaded. We have featured news that's being displayed here in this nice carousel. In fact, I can kind of scroll through this, and you can see it gives us a really cool little animated uh, way of scrolling through featured news. And then you can see over here I have maybe some of the unfeatured news that we also want to display on here. Again, all of this now is being able to pull information cross-site collection, possibly even across farms if we wanted to, and, and into our site that lives in SharePoint Online. So hopefully this shows you that just using a little bit of script and the script editor web part, we can create some really powerful mashups that are very similar to, similar to cross-site publishing.